Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we're finishing up our discussion on the endocrine system, and this is recording part four. Now, switching gears, we'll talk for a few minutes about obstetric drugs. First, a word about oral contraceptives. These medications usually have some combination of estrogen and progesterone. The estrogen is probably responsible for most of the side effects that we may see. You should especially be aware that women who take oral contraceptives may have some increased risk of thromboembolism, MI, or stroke. And this is especially true in women who are over 35 and smoke cigarettes while taking oral contraceptives. Patients who take any hormonal drug uh, contraceptive, including oral contraceptives, should use caution with Sugamidex and may need a backup form of birth control for seven days, as we've discussed last semester. Oxytocin, or pitocin, has many uses. It can be used to induce labor, usually starting at a rate of one to two milliunits per minute and titrating to contractions. Oxytocin is also the first line treatment for postpartum uterine atony. The uterus has to contract and become firm after delivery in order to stop bleeding. At our institution, we dose the Pitocin with a bolus and then an infusion. We give an 18 unit bolus that's given over 30 minutes, and then we continue an infusion at 60 milliunits per minute. This is much lower dose than you may see at some hospitals, where 20 or even 40 units will be squirted into a one liter bag and then run wide open. The reason we do it this way is to minimize side effects, which include hypotension, flushing, tachycardia, and nausea. Other drugs to treat postpartum bleeding. The first is ergot derivatives like methyl ergonavine or methergen. This drug is a partial agonist antagonist at the serotonergic, dopaminergic, and alpha adrenergic receptors. It causes uterine blood vessels to constrict, and uterine smooth muscle to contract. It's used to prevent and control bleeding after childbirth or abortion, and can also be used to help expel retained products after missed abortion. Methogen should be given at the dose of 0.2 milligrams intramuscularly for uterine atony. Side effects include hypertension, nausea, vomiting, cramping, and pulmonary hypertension. Methogen is contraindicated in patients who have severe preeclampsia, hypertension, and pulmonary hypertension. Prostaglandin analogs like carboprost tromethamine, also called hemabate, can be used for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. This drug induces uterine contractions and reduces postpartum bleeding. It can also be used to trigger abortion. The dose is 250 micrograms IM for uterine atony, Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and bronchoconstriction, and hemabate is contradicted in patients with severe asthma. Misoprostol, or Cytotec, is another prostaglandin which can be taken orally or rectally for induction of labor and treatment of postpartum bleeding. Also on the subject of OB drugs is terbutaline. Terbutaline is a beta-2 adrenergic receptor agonist, and it's used as a tocolytic in order to delay preterm labor, but we don't see this very often. It can also be used as a bronchodilator. Magnesium sulfate has many different uses. In women with preeclampsia, we see them presenting with hypertension, proteinuria, which can progress to cerebral or visual disturbances, pulmonary edema, thrombocytopenia, abdominal pain, and liver dysfunction. It's called preeclampsia, whereas eclampsia is the onset of seizures. Magnesium sulfate plays an important role in these patients because it allows for seizure prophylaxis as well as seizure treatment by stabilizing excitable membranes. It also helps relax smooth and skeletal muscles. This inhibits release of acetylcholine, 
reduces motor plate end plate sensitivity and the amplitude of the end plate potential. It leads to vasodilation, which can be effective for lowering blood pressure. It can also cause flushing and sweating as a result. The magnesium acts as a tocolytic, tocolytic to stop premature labor. And we often see patients lose their deep tendon reflexes starting at a concentration of about four milligrams per deciliter. Magnesium also slows action through the SA node and prolongs conduction time. And this makes it a good treatment for torsade, administered as one to two grams slow IV bolus. Magnesium is normally loaded as a four to six gram IV bolus given over 10 to 15 minutes, followed by an infusion at one to three grams per hour, shooting for a therapeutic serum level of four to six milligrams per deciliter and definitely staying below eight. Magnesium is cleared by the kidneys, and so it would not be appropriate to use in patients with severe renal disease. It's also not used in myasthenia gravis because it can worsen their weakness, or in patients with heart block or a recent MI. Signs of magnesium overdose include hypotension, absent reflexes, weakness, CNS depression, potentiation of neuromuscular blockade, or respiratory arrest. The treatment for magnesium overdose is calcium gluconate. That ends this section. As always, please let me know if you have any questions.